Good afternoon, Perry. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. Fantastic. All right, got the slide up there. So I'm, I'm sure you guys are wondering what the hell is somebody from retail coming to tell us about APIs? And um, all I want to share with you is a journey, um, and it may resonate with some of you, it may not. Hopefully, some of you will take a few points out of this and um, find it useful. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about a few things. I want to talk about why APIs, so at least we set the context for that. Then I'll get into what the journey is and talk about some of the challenges in terms of adoption, which is what we're all struggling with. And then finally, hopefully, offer some ideas about a way forward. Okay. Anybody recognizes this picture and can tell what this picture is about? Or to ask the question differently, what does this have to do with APIs? As you can tell, this is a very, 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 very old computer, right? Uh, believe it or not, this is how people did APIs back in the 1940s. Uh, and the point is, because some people think that APIs is something new. It is not. It's just how you do APIs, right? And what does API stand for? It's application programming interface. That interface has evolved. And the challenge for all of us today, that interface is a lot more complex than this. And just to give you an idea, this is one representation of something that most of you, I'm sure, are, th are thinking about these days. is something like cognitive APIs. And it's just one category out of hundreds and thousands of APIs that are available out there that your organizations are trying to take advantage of, right? So when we think about this, that's when we start thinking about why APIs. So APIs, basically, there is a couple of reasons why APIs. Uh, first of all, it's because business needs to do a few things. Business needs to innovate. And for that, you need to stay relevant by introducing new disruptive products and services. And just like the previous speaker said, you cannot do that fast enough if you're trying to do it with traditional software development. The cycles are too long. Uh, it's a costly production uh, environment, and you need to do it in a way that is a lot more faster. Therefore, the next point, which is speed. If you cannot maintain a first mover advantage by actually, whichever industry you're in, by actually bringing a service or a product first and being first to the market, you're going to become irrelevant very, very quickly. Uh, the third one is uh, agility. One thing that we're all facing, regardless of which industry you're in, is that your customers are dynamic, the markets are dynamic, events that are driving both the market opportunities and risks are highly, highly dynamic. So the only constant is change. So how do you create software in a world of change? So the old models of we have to figure out what the requirements are, make sure we wait until the requirements are stable, lock down the requirements for this big, humongous, monolithic piece of software, and then we're going to take God knows how many months to actually develop and test this piece of software, and hopefully someday we'll actually deploy it and the customer will get to touch and use this software. Those days are done. And anybody, any business who's still stuck in that model is going to be gone with that same model. And finally, everybody, as we're going through this digitization, you're developing more and more digital assets, whether that's data or some IP, be it an algorithm, a, a model that you have that's unique. But the key thing is, how valuable is that asset if you're not able to share it either internally with different departments within your own organization, share it with your partners and customers, 
And more importantly, if more and more of your assets are becoming digital, how do you monetize them? Right? And that's why APIs are important. APIs is a way for us to shrink wrap these digital assets in a way that is consumable so that they can be shared and you have an opportunity actually to monetize them and actually make some money out of these assets. Um, the second part from a technology perspective is what we've seen is as we move into more of these services architectures, again, I, I don't care about what particular flavor of it you, you like, whether you like SOA, whether you like microservices, component-based architectures, you name it, whatever you want. The bottom line is, as you get into more of these distributed component-based architectures, yes, you gain in agility, yes, you gain in, in, in speed, but you're also increasing in complexity. And managing that complexity becomes fundamentally important. Um, driving higher efficiency becomes also very, very important. If you're not able to do things more efficiently, then suddenly this becomes, your API experiment becomes nothing than uh, a little POC, a, po a proof of concept, a little pet project for somebody in some department. Uh, that would be actually the biggest mistake we would make is to make APIs about technology and for APIs to be just nothing but an IT initiative. And the, the, the need to have a better leverage of external partners. So for example, as you're starting to be asked to build better software, more of it, and faster, you're going to run out of re internal resources, your own coders. So how do you leverage the millions of developers out there that actually can help you build and build out faster and more efficiently? The only way you can do that is if you start making some of your digital assets exposed as APIs. So now that we understand why APIs, let's look at what an API journey is. And I'm just talking here about what we went through, and this has been about, I'd say, about a five-year journey. So we started with internal APIs. That was actually the most, um, I'd say, uh, impetus that drove why we were thinking about APIs. And the main purpose behind that was actually just enterprise reuse. Um, somebody has developed an algorithm for calculating taxes, right? and you want to use it for the website, your e-commerce site, well, guess what? Now that you want to do the same thing on a mobile app, why do you have to recreate that? Wouldn't it be nice to take that same algorithm, wrap it up with an API, expose it in this API, and let that be used by the mobile app? Or let that be used by a partner website, and so on and so forth. So, that, so it's that internal reuse that drove this. Um, mostly because we wanted to do a few things. One, we wanted to make sure that data is shared with integrity, as opposed to having to copy data into different places, making sure data is synchronized, or suddenly now data is out of sync. What, 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 what is the trusted version of the data? All of that stuff becomes irrelevant if you create a data service Expose that as an API, you know that everybody is consuming the same piece of data. The same thing for business logic, the same thing again for having consistent experience for your customers across all devices, as opposed to why am I getting charged this percentage of tax if I do it on the mobile app and a different tax if I go into the store and yet another one when I'm on the e-commerce side. That's very confusing for customers and customers don't like to be confused. And more importantly, if you look at it internally for us, we wanted actually to change the way we do software development and move into more of a loose coupling between the components of software that we develop. Why? Because it simplifies development. It improves how we do testing so that you don't have to have these ridiculously long regression tests every time you change one component. 
It makes operating and deploying your software much easier and, of course, monitoring it as well. So that was the first stage. So initially, we're just doing this to make sure we operate internally much faster, more efficiently in a scalable fashion. Once we have that, and we started thinking about, thinking about, uh, I'd say about 50 APIs or something like that, suddenly now you're thinking, how do I manage this set of APIs? Especially if you're looking at growing beyond just a dozen APIs into hundreds and maybe even tens of, uh, of hundreds of, or thousands of, of APIs. That's where we started thinking about this whole concept of API management and looking at a platform for API management. And for us at the time, it was a little company out of uh, the, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, that was called Apigee. And they were still a small, humble company. We worked very closely with them. Eventually, they got acquired by a much more uh, bigger unknown company called Google. The bottom line is, we, we took API management seriously, and what it allowed us is to scale to a point where we, we felt confident that we had the right infrastructure, both in terms of security, management, scale, so that actually we can expose these APIs to the outside world. Not in an open way, but to at least few select partners that would allow them actually to start benefiting from the same digital assets that we expose internally to uh, different partners. Um, why is that important? It's for two reasons. Mostly to drive scale and to drive collaboration. If you want to collaborate with your partners, it is much more easier if you do that through APIs. What, what is the benefit for us? What was the driver behind this? Number one, for us to be able to leverage external partners. Uh, and these are partners that could provide functionality that we need, be it things like uh, electronic signatures, different payment methods, uh, bringing on actually uh, product data from the different brands that we work on. Um, the other value for us also is why you want to do this is you're accelerating your time to value. Uh, imagine if you want to introduce new product or service and you're working with an external partner and you're telling them we're going to jointly develop a piece of software. It'll take you months just to figure out what is the protocol for you to do this, going through the different legal procedures, contractual agreements, what have you, and then even after development is being done, just getting to agree on how we're going to test this and uh, validating it and all of that stuff, that's way too slow. Um, if you work with APIs, then it becomes very easy because you start with contract first, you agree on what you're expecting from both sides, everybody goes back to their shop, they develop what they develop, when they need to test, they don't have to wait for you to be ready because they can create stops. There is a contract and you can create a stop for it until uh, the real component is ready. And, and finally, it allows us to monetize our digital assets. This is what, how you could start actually taking valuable data or valuable uh, logic that you have and you can make it available out there uh, for exchange of monetary value. The next stage now that we're starting to think about is how do we start creating what we call an API ecosystem? And an ecosystem is not just about one organization, one entity. It's thinking about who within your natural ecosystem would benefit from your APIs and who you can benefit from. And then start thinking about open APIs. And open APIs basically is having robust, mature APIs that are highly secure, that you can just put it out there. And why would you want to do that? So that you can drive a different level of innovation, right? Organizations who have done this have seen amazing exponential innovation, where you just put your APIs out there, people can discover them, they're well-documented, and then you will be amazed 
what other people can think of in terms of products and services that your own internal teams can never imagine. Why? Because people have different perspectives. And actually, innovation will come most probably from people who don't have a perspective that's already enclosed within your enterprise, uh, myopic because of the lens that you're using, and has been highly influenced by the ideas that already circulate within the organization. If you need new blood and new thought processes, open up to the world and you'll be amazed what the world has to offer. Now, innovation here is not just about software innovation. You'll be amazed about people actually developing software that opens up a whole new business models, right? So if you think about a traditional retailer like Sephora, what we do basically is we curate products and services and we offer them to our customers, you guys, for an exchange of value, right? But imagine now somebody writing an application that says, you know what, we're gonna use what Sephora has to offer in terms of their product catalog and what have you, but I'm gonna create actually a platform for freelance makeup artists to actually sign up and be available for Sephora customers to use them. And the, the synergy here is that Sephora has a lot of information, private information, that we don't want to share with anybody else about our customers because of privacy. But wouldn't it be nice if there is an algorithm that does not share the data, but actually that matches the customer based on their profile with the makeup artist, with the products that they prefer. And suddenly now, you have a totally new business model. You're not just in pushing a product, in the business of pushing a product, you're in the business actually now of serving your customer, solving their problems, and providing actually a platform for connecting service providers with customers. Totally new line of business. And same thing again about operating models. You're gonna be operating internally and externally differently if you invite external innovation. All right, so what are some of the challenges that we faced during this journey? Uh, it all starts with mindset. And the biggest challenge is we operate with the old mindset while we're trying to do something new. And my recommendation is, number one, if you're gonna do APIs and do them well, and you wanna move in this journey, is you have to abandon that monolithic, centralized application mindset and move into more of component-based distributed. Um, the other thing is um, that's very, very important, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this as well, is do not let the frustration whenever you're trying to do API management become an obstacle from moving forward. There will be challenging days. There, there will be times when you're trying to deploy an API or you're dealing with somebody who's consuming it that had different expectations. And if you give up on that and say, see, it doesn't work, you're never gonna move forward. You have to persist, work through some of these challenges. You need new skill sets. Um, one of the key things in terms of APIs is actually you have to think about what's behind the API, which is basically the service, whether that's a data service or a service that provides certain business logic. And the skill that I see lacking in the market today is the skill for service design. You don't just need people who, who know how to code, but you need somebody who can design the service at the right granularity know where to, to define the boundaries of that service so that it's self-contained, you can scale it, you can do it at scale, it's meaningful, and you can iterate on it multiple times. Um, the other skill that, as trivial as it is, and most of you would think, why would you even list this on your presentation, is this idea of thinking and acting contract first, right? One of the biggest problems about APIs is badly designed APIs, right? 
because people haven't thought about what the interface ought to be, what that API contract needs to be first before they go and spend time in terms of the implementation details. And finally, do not underestimate the importance of DevOps, right? Why? Because if you don't have a clear segregation of concerns, right, between what the actual service that you're developing needs to do versus how we're going to secure the service versus how the communication protocol is going to be done, it cannot all be done by one person. Uh, if, if you're looking for that unicorn who has the expertise in all these domains, good luck. You're going to be in for a while before you can find somebody who can develop APIs for you. So be open to start working in a multidisciplinary team with clear segregation of concerns. And finally, you need new tool sets, right? It's not just about having a programming uh, language to work with, but you need an API management platform. A service mesh is something that's uh, emerging as something that helps with taking the burden of inter-service communication away from the developers, so the developers can only worry about one and only one thing, which is developing the service, as opposed to having to worry about the complexity and protocols for inter-service communication. And more importantly, uh, you need to start thinking about automated uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines. Uh, you cannot do this manually, especially if you want to do it at scale. Um, and more importantly, you need to start thinking about how you do product management differently. The traditional product management just does not work. Um, I'm showing here a picture of a book. This is not the book, it's a book, but it's one that I've read and I found extremely useful in terms of how do you do product management differently in this API world, right? And if you don't get the product management on board, it doesn't matter if you solve all of the technology issues, you're still gonna be stuck in the old model. And product management is gonna force you to still develop applications Whereas actually, if you're thinking about this properly, you're gonna be developing components with well-defined interfaces that allow you then later on to compose into uh, applications and services. All right, a um, few things that I wanna leave you with, right? Um, number one, if you're gonna do APIs and do them well, it doesn't happen by accident. So spend some time, build a strategy behind this. And what do I mean by strategy? I don't mean by going to one of the top five consulting companies, you can do that. But you don't have to is what I'm saying. But it's answering some fundamental questions, right? The first one is why use APIs in my ecosystem? And remember what I'm saying this, not in my enterprise, in my ecosystem. You have to think ecosystem in your strategy. And what, what are you trying to get out of this? What is the desired outcome? Uh, uh, desired outcome could be all kinds of things. Uh, the usual suspects is agility, speed, collaboration. But figure out what matters to your organization because that will define the approach you're gonna take. And finally, uh, answer the question, how do I bring everybody along? Don't think about, this is fundamentally not just a technology change, this is also an organizational change and a people change. And if you don't have proper change management in terms of explaining to people how their roles are gonna change, what they're gonna be doing different now in this API world, you're gonna have a lot of people left behind and you're gonna be running with APIs alone. And once you get to that finish line, you're gonna look around and there's nobody else to support you and it's not a good place to be. Um, Execute iteratively. Start very small, fail fast, and guess what? Rinse and repeat, right? There's no magic there. I know it sounds trivial, but do not try to do big bang, right? That that's, doesn't usually work. And finally, build your ecosystem. APIs only make sense in an ecosystem, right? So look for API cha champions, 
and early adopters within your organization. Not everybody is ready for this. So don't go first and it down people's throat. People are not ready for it. Organizations are not ready for it. Not everybody is ready for APIs. So find the ones that are mature enough, have the capacity, the understanding, and the ability to come along with it in this journey with you. Cultivate partnerships. Partnerships, partnerships, partnerships. Whether it's business partners from outside, people who would potentially be consumers of your APIs, or guess what? People who have developed APIs that you can partner with and you can consume those APIs. And finally, make sure you plug into a community. Don't do this journey on your own. There is communities like this, like API Days. Um, sponsor or participate in hackathons. I can tell you, we did one hackathon, about, I'd say, 40 hours, literally. It's less than two days. And we put three fundamental problems that we were looking at. And we were amazed at what people came up with using our APIs. It's just fantastic. So be out there working in the ecosystem, develop your ecosystem, enrich it, and you'll be amazed at what it has to provide. That's it, and I'll take any questions you guys have. Thank you.